Welcome back to episode six of Take Five Friday, where we talk the people and process behind making and maintaining the U.S. diplomatic presence around the world. This week, Angel Dizan, OBO's Managing Director for Program Development Coordination and Support, is talking with Marion Weiss from Weiss Manfredi. Weiss Manfredi is an architecture, landscape, and urbanism firm based in New York City. They operate at the nexus of architecture, art, landscape, and urban design. The firm's projects have been featured in exhibitions around the world, and they are the architect of the new U.S. Embassy in New Delhi, India. Marianne is co-founder. Angel has 30 years of experience in the design and construction industry and is currently responsible for overseeing all facets of the planning, design, engineering, and cost development, as well as project coordination and management for nearly $20 billion of worldwide diplomatic capital construction. We're excited to welcome them both to Take Five Friday today. Hey, Marion, how are you? Good. How are you, Angel? I'm doing really well. You know, we were talking earlier that uh, we've been working together for six years, and I actually don't know the answer to a lot of these kinds of questions, so I'm excited to hear your responses. So we'll just get into it. Uh, The first one is, uh, what led you to become an architect? You know, it's a great question, and um, I I can say that I was lucky to have a father who was an aeronautical engineer and a mother who was a geologist and a geographer, so I actually think architecture falls somewhere in the middle, Um, but I was building dollhouses pretty obsessively when I saw um, a publication on Habitat when I was seven years old. So by the time I was 11, I had built 27 dollhouses, all inspired by these stacking cubes. You could create courthouses and high rises and you could make them do a bunch of things. And I got power tools for eighth grade graduation. You know, there was a a host of things that were building on this, but I was also um, thinking about being a concert pianist. So there were these two worlds that were diametrically opposed and each had this kind of intensity. Um, But architecture really prevailed as being the most compelling, enduring and inventive opportunities to express, you know, any passion towards art. That's amazing. I mean, you know, it's funny. I I did not have that experience of even considering being a concert pianist. Um, I was, uh, I always wanted to be an artist. And my dad said, if you, you know, you can't do that because you're going to be poor, you should be an architect, which essentially you're poor, right? So it's, I don't know if I got very far on that one. Um, so what interested you in, be, in working with the State Department? You know, that, I, it's very interesting. Again, coming from a family where service has been important. My father uh, worked for NASA. Uh, my mother was the environmentalist for the U.S. Synthetic Fuels Corporation. Both of them really believe that there are larger things that have larger value for us and for me. um, State Department is truly invested in an enduring commitment to having design uh, and excellence in design represent our commitment to other countries and those relationships. And we've always been motivated by projects that are larger than ourselves, larger than even just, in a sense, polishing the top of the architectural pyramid, but something that's really invested in being uh, fully connected with the culture and being both forward looking, but also drawing history and cultures together in the expression of architecture. So in many ways, what could be a better honor than to be involved in designing an embassy? I mean, it's, it's, it's as good as it gets, honestly, in terms of the values that we all have as architects about what we hope our work can do, which is to have an impact and have meaning and elevate the experience of people who are using these buildings and landscapes together, these campuses, it's it's pretty extraordinary. You know, I'm gonna, we actually had very specific questions that we were gonna ask, I'm gonna throw you a curveball. Talk about that in terms of the project that was sort of presented in the beginning, the, the New Delhi uh, MSB. I mean, the New Delhi project, uh, talk about a project of a lifetime. I mean, it's, if you think about being able to uh, build the second chapter uh, on the New Delhi Embassy, U.S. Embassy campus. There you have Edward Durrell Stone, whose very first building was all about, in a sense, drawing traditions that came from inspiration from the Taj Mahal. And it was really about almost a, a, a regional appreciation and a kind of global awareness that there's enduring design traditions that are both contemporary and traditional that could come together. That was pretty inspiring. I mean, when we uh, went on to uh, rise from those stairs, you know, for 
reflecting pool, the columns, the gris soleil. There was a sense of uh, perfection in many ways about what was achieved uh, that was not overworked, and not overwrought, but very welcoming and yet, and yet very um, impressive in terms of the commitment of what the relationship between the US and India could mean. And so that's over 60 years ago. And to come on to that, uh, that opportunity to say, how do we actually now allow new buildings and new landscapes together to not look like one building after another, that may be one building because of another, and that the journey through the landscape to and through these buildings could feel inevitable and in, in a sense brought up to the same level of aspiration that that very building had when it was done over 60 years ago. I, I totally agree with you. You know, um, I think for people that are, are listening, uh, the Edward de Wall Stone building is a culturally significant property, you know, designated by the Secretary of State. Our hope in our program is that we continue that kind of legacy of work with the kinds of architects that we're hiring today to do projects uh, that in that same kind of time frame, 50, 60 years from now, they're, they're going to look at a Weissman Freddy project <laughs> in Delhi and, and someone else will be speaking on your behalf saying, you know, with the work that they did there, I'm complimenting and all that stuff. So that's, that's our hope in terms of a broader sort of program thing. Um, the last major question is, uh, what are your major sources of inspiration in your work? You know, I, it's interesting. So many things can be inspiring. But for us, the greatest source of inspiration is when we know that there's a large and in some ways impossible to solve problem. That's when we're most excited. And you could argue that these embassies are impossible to solve problems on the surface because there's such a constellation of things that need to be solved all at once. And yet to be able to solve all those things, but also transcend each one of those, you know, each one of those requirements so that something extraordinary emerges is inspiring for us. Inspiring because, in fact, excellence is really the goal that everybody's aspiring to at OBO. It's an amazing team equally invested in the successful outcome of it. And so that's one source of inspiration. Another source of inspiration is being able to be part of other cultures and to be able to draw from the legacies and histories that in some ways have opportunities to be rejuvenated in new chapters and be given form. I mean, what can be better than to imagine being able to translate cultural identities together to become a gateway that many people would use, say, our country, and that might be their first portal through the consular garden, for instance, to discover what the value we have in our relationship through design and through landscape and through architecture. So it's this kind of weaving of these kind of enduring ecologies of values. And I think that it's, it's both the value of and the values that are being communicated. You know, representation is a word that we think is inspiring that the State Department uses, representational space. It's saying that there's something that has value that needs to be given expression. And we as a country have an opportunity, and I would say an obligation, to really take that to the highest level possible. Marion well said, uh, thank you so much for your time. I and mean, I think we're done. Thank you, Angel. Tune in next week for a conversation with OBO's Art and Embassies curators. See you then.